How are you? Candace. Can you see me? Do I need I, to come low? Uh, I see you. You look great, by the way. I see you from here. Yeah, I see. I see you. You see me. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Did I just interrupt your, your sunbathing or what's going on? Well, you know, I like to multitask. So a little bit of yoga, a little bit of running and a little bit of sun tanning. Um, it's been a pretty busy day. I want to apologize for being a little bit late. Okay. I've um, been making these amazing, yummy, like yam cupcakes and bread. And people are actually calling me and hitting me up and wanting more. Man, I want one. I'm going to have to get you one, really. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, we'll talk about my food. A okay, bit. no worries, no worries. Yeah, it was funny because... I was talking about my news background. People probably heard way too much about me, but I was just stretching and stretching. Let's talk about everything. And then boom, there you are. <laughs> okay, well, if you don't mind, do you like going by Marco? You want Mark? Like, what do you want me? This is our first time meeting. I know, you know what? So, we've, we've chatted online, but never, yeah, Marco. Marco's fine. Yeah, Marco. Hi, fine. Marco. Hey, hey, hey. So how was your holiday weekend? I mean, did you, obviously you got some sun, but what else did you do? Um. Well, besides making these yummy uh, vegan yeah. yam cupcakes yes. from scratch that have Ooh. no butter, that are amazing with my homemade cream cheese icing. Um, mm, sounds so good. I've been incorporating swimming into my weekly workout routine. So um, on the morning of the 4th, I did my laps okay. um, and Sunday. Yeah, yeah, morning. of course. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and then I um, did some miscellaneous things and made a really yummy salad to take to a really close friend's house. Cool. Um, he's on his own. And we made arrangements to share that day together. So we had salmon, quinoa, and I made this amazing salad with my homemade garlic dressing that I make every day. So any, sh can I just say shout out to the Love by Candace family? There you go. Yeah, of course. They're all watching. Okay. I want to shout out the Love by Candace family that is here, that's been with me forever, like 15 years back with Facebook. Yep. Uh, bienvenidos, the new, you know, Nuevo, Familia. Um, <laughs> if you're not familiar with my food or my passion for food, you can check out my highlights, Chef Candy. But, um, you know, I, food is a passion of mine. Do you mind me just mentioning that? Really well, you know what? I like to talk about everything and anything. I, there's, there's no, whatever, you go, do it, yes. Okay, well, um, if you've been with me, you know food is my passion, whether I'm supporting local restaurants, um, sharing with you all the yummy things, especially right now, because a lot of restaurants are closed, right? And, yes. And, you know, and there's very few that are willing to put forth that effort to follow all the regulations and stay open. So I was at Ma's Italian last night in Burbank. Mm. Absolutely amazing alfresco dining experience. And right now, that's hard to find, right? Where you still get service that comes to your table totally. and, you, and you have that ambiance. So anytime I have one of those experiences, I like to share as well as the food I make at home, which I try to um, during, a lot of things have changed for me. Love by Candace has changed with the pandemic and being in quarantine and oh, yeah. everyone facing these financial issues. Like I'm yeah. not making these big elaborate meals that require yes. 30 ingredients you know, mm -hmm. to make a panang from scratch. I'm sharing like the easy, inexpensive meals that are also healthy yes. that I eat on a regular basis. So even when I take my social media breaks, I might share, hey, having my matcha tea and my wheat toast with, you know, whatever. Mm. So it's all, it's all about easy too. I love when you said easy things to do because for me, I love delicious stuff, but I don't like to take a lot of time. So I like when you say it's easy to do. It's all about that. Yeah. And, and um, for example, I shared with my followers, you know, that have kids that maybe mm -hmm. can't afford to buy a bunch of the yummy yogurt, get a natural preserves, fruit preserves, and just get that, you know, Fage Greek yogurt and put mm -hmm. a dollop of that jelly in it and give it to your kids and you can put it in a little cute container, et cetera. And you know how much money you're saving just with that. So that's just one example of the kind of things I'm sharing and my salad dressing I make from scratch. It's like the basic ingredients that you just have in your home um, yeah. right now, you know? And yeah, and, and, I, and I love that. And you know what else too? So I'm telling you, I'm wearing this Hawaiian shirt. I was telling everybody because you lived in Hawaii for quite some time. 
and you inspired me to get into this Hawaiian zone that I'm in right now. But I you know, inspired you. I, wait, you wait, 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 wait. We gotta stop. Yes. A little black girl from Dayton, Ohio, inspired you <laughs> to get into the Hawaii zone. Yes. That's pretty dope. Okay, keep yeah. going. Yeah, you did. You did. So, so here I am. Aloha to everybody, right? Aloha. But, except you have a drink and I don't. There's a problem. Wait, some, can somebody well, read me a drink? it's not alcoholic. It's kombucha with fresh lime. Does that okay. still count? You know what? I love kombucha and I've known GT Dave for quite some time since like years ago. And I can't wait to have him on this show. I love kombucha. It, I feel like it keeps me, it keeps me healthy and just so like on point. You know what Wait I mean? for the gut. Hey, you said GTE? Or is that no, who I'm drinking? No, GT Dave. He's oh, a, a brand. It's a brand of kombucha, but it's everywhere. And it's my favorite type. I think it's my favorite, too. You need to connect us. I will. No, you <laughs> and you'll love him. He's he's fantastic. So wait, I think, so, I think on, is it, do they have the trilogy? They do. My, I, listen, I got ready to say, dude, you could have got offended. But it was really being used as a term of endearment, meaning we're becoming very close. Okay. How would you have taken it if I had just gave you a dude right there? You know what? You could say dude. Why not? You could say You would have been offended. Let's try it. No. Tell me you're going to connect us, and then I'm going to do it organically. And tell me how you really feel. OK, so Candace, I'm going to connect you with GT. You guys will vibe. And I'm telling you, I'm not kidding. You guys dude. will connect. Dude. Yeah, yeah. But I'm serious. I'm going to. I'm going to. Wait. No. Wait. I I will. Let, I we are going to connect you. But I want to talk about you. You okay. have so many fascinating things. So some people oh. who are watching will remember you from Millionaire Matchmaker. You were on that show for many years and you had the best comments to some of those people going on. How was it working with Patty Stanger? and dealing with all that drama going on with that show. OK, that's a mouthful, and I'm going to give it to you all right okay. now. Um, okay. We'll come back to Hawaii. Yeah, okay. I was just going to yes. wrap that up with, yeah, I lived there with my ex. We oh. broke up. Okay. Um, I love Hawaii. It was okay. just, it enriched my life. And the fact that you say, like, because of me, you're feeling that Hawaii vibe, which I yeah. feel like is very down to earth, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Flow, no stress, give love, receive love kind Absolutely. of flow. And so that means a lot to me. Good. And um, also my last two projects, theatrical projects, same time next Christmas with ABC and uh, The Wrong Missy. We're both filmed there. In I can't Hawaii. wait to talk about those. Oh, I have yeah, we can go back to those. But let's okay. talk about my unscripted world. Yes. Yeah. Why not? So, yeah, I was the only matchmaker to appear on every episode the last three seasons of the show with Patty. So that would be the last season with Bravo. Right. And and that was the highest rated in the history of the show. And when it I came addictive. on, then, what it were you going to say? It was great. It was, my wife actually watched it all the time, and I would catch it. And then I became into it. And I'm like, oh, this is actually a really fun show to watch. Yeah, and we had a, a ton of Bravo celebrities that came on that season. It, it was really an amazing season. And I was so honored that it was the highest rated. And I came on and replaced a couple of people. Yep. Um, so at the time, I was working. I have a psychology degree and a law degree. So I've been life coaching since I got my psychology degree back at the University of Dayton, um, mm -hmm. where I went on a full academic scholarship. So. I've been life and love coaching for quite some time and connecting people who end up getting married, but never officially calling myself a match maker. Right. And, um, and I'll take a pause so that you can actually like discuss and ask questions. So because of my experience, that's why I was asked to interview for Millionaire Matchmaker. And at the time, I was working as a producer behind the scenes doing unscripted work. So I wasn't, so I've done so much, right? Theatrical, I've done unscripted behind. Mm -hmm. I've developed shows. I've been a segment producer. Like I found The Bachelor. I did all the casting for Match Made in Heaven on WeTV. Um, so I was working behind the camera and they said, hey, Candace, you want to come in and interview for this? And I was like, you know, and I, I hadn't had any direct experience with Patty. Um, I really wasn't familiar with the show 
um, I just knew she was a big personality. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yes. And so I, I didn't know how much of that was TV, how much was real. You know, I had no idea whatsoever stepping on to set. I mean, that was the first time I actually met her. So how was, how was that interaction? Big. You know what I mean? Like when you have a big personality, <laughs> and, I, and, and and I would say I'm a big personality too. Yes. But I'm also a very respectful big personality. So I understood, hey, this isn't my show. You know okay. what I mean? Nice. And I showed nice. up on set with respect. I got her a gift card to uh, Sur La Table. Because uh, I, you know, I researched. I'm like, oh, she likes to cook. Like, let yes. me show up and be respectful and be humble and considerate because this is your show. And I can only imagine how hard you worked to become an executive producer and to have your own show. So mm -hmm. I went into it with a, a very realistic perspective on, because I know how hard you have to work to get to that level. So yeah. I had a level of respect for her just, you know, behind the camera entertainment wise. Um, and, you know, it was the last season. There was a ton of new people, ton of new producers. Um, and I learned a lot watching her. I bet. I learned a lot. You know, she, there's a reason why she was on TV. Yeah. And, and I could tell you have, you have that dynamic personality. I could see you easily fitting in. And, and like I said, you were so fun to watch. And I bet you that did segue you into being you know, uh, a, a life coach, if you will, a lifestyle coach. And you've given advice to many singles. I've seen it during COVID because, you know, for singles, it's really tough to meet new people. I mean, bars are closed. You can't go dancing. So what kind of advice, because a lot of singles maybe are, are watching right now, what kind of advice would you give them, like right now during these times, to, to meet somebody? I'm going to give you a great answer. But first, can I ask for some hearts? <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me corners on it. No, my family knows. Like usually, I'm I'm looking at them. I'm hitting wave. I'm saying their names, and then they're yep. giving me hearts, which are like claps or kids who are funny. You are and we have home. questions too. There's questions on here too, so let's not forget. Oh, okay. So I'll answer your question, and then okay. we'll look at their question. Got it. Okay. Um, what's been really great about my breakup? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I know, right? Going through a breakup right now <laughs> is. I can relate to all the singles right now going through a really difficult time. This hasn't been an easy time for me, like relocating across the ocean, getting here, starting to get settled, working on some projects, going in for auditions, developing my new show. I do want to mention something about that. Oh, yeah. But um, doing all of this and then it all coming to a complete, you know, stall. Mm -hmm. And I'm single. I don't have family or friends here. It's been really difficult. Um, but what's been great is I can relate to my single clients. And, and like you mentioned, thank you. I'm giving advice that is very specific to what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And um, with the quarantine, it, it is so difficult, like you said, to have that personal interaction, connection with people right now, because we're limited as far as where we can be in public spaces and yeah. traveling, et cetera. Um, the biggest tip, I can give, and this is something that has been really beneficial to me the last couple weeks. You may notice I take social media breaks. This might be the last big one I take. Like I take okay. a couple weeks and I don't post, which mm -hmm. isn't great for my business, but mm -hmm. it's good for me um, yes. as an artist and being able to step away from my phone and you know uh, reflect on my own life, my own yeah. happiness, my own health, because how can I share with you and with other people, like, what do you need right now during this difficult time if I'm not in a good place? And, you know, I wanted to post a lot before our interview today. And in my spirit, yesterday, I was like, no, you know, like, I need to relax, have a nice dinner outside and be at peace and, and, and get centered for this interview. That's more important. Um, but right now, I feel like as singles, we're already so involved in the digital world, right? And, yes. as, and, and single people before this were just so immersed in the dating apps. And let's not, let's, who are we kidding ourselves? Like IG, IG Live, IG Stories, IG Post. I mean, it's essentially no. 
Social media, social media, social media. Right. I mean, it's but it's it's a dating app. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if I go do my bikini dance, it, you know, after this, I'm gonna have 20 more DMs from single guys. <laughs> That's after true. Me, you oh. know, can, can we go out to dinner? But see, this is what the problem is. Mm. So how do we address this as single people right now that are longing for actual interaction? Can, Step yes. away from your phone okay. and be present and interact with the people you see every day at the taco stand, at the car wash. Let me tell you, during my break, I've met some amazing people that if I had been all on my phone and someone just said, oh, hey, you know, you coming to the pool too? Yeah, maybe. And I kept going uh -huh. or, you know, a guy stopped me and made one comment the other day when I was taking my braids out. You know what I mean? Like, and he was just like, okay, I see you girl. And I was like, hmm. Next thing I know, we're talking for an hour okay. and, and, and we're cool now and yeah. we're going to hang out. And I so like that. you see, so you're, saying, you're saying real people, you got to meet real people. Do you want to elaborate on that or do you want me to continue? No, I, I'd rather hear from you. I, I'm just watching. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm taking it in. Real people. Yeah. So it's having that actual human interaction mm -hmm. that feeds your soul, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And, and, and that does nothing but elevates you. Yes. And your energy. I get it. it, it your whole, your whole headspace, everything. And I, I think that ties into this person's question. So I want to answer. He says, Robert, he says, should single people still use dating apps even during this time? That's a very real question. Yeah, it's very real. And um, I don't see anything wrong with dating apps during this time, mm -hmm. uh, before this time, or after this time. Yeah. It's when you rely on them solely to the point that you no longer know how to engage and have a conversation with a human being sitting across the table mm -hmm. from you. Now, when it becomes a crutch, when you're single and you're using these dating apps as a crutch versus when you're at line at Whole Foods or someone allows you down the aisle or someone says, hey, looks yummy what you're making tonight. Hello, that's a ping. That's a poke. That's a, that's called a real life poke. But we have forgotten what those real life pokes are. Right. right. right? That's so, that is so well put. You're right. You're right. So that's it kind of goes real... over our head. And I get those real life pokes all the time. You know what yeah. I mean? And I could just be oblivious to it or it's like, hey. When the owner of this restaurant comes by three times and says, hey, Candace, please <laughs> tell me hmm, that's if there's anything. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, my gosh. So I, I bet, though, you know, having to have questions from single people, and, and I am sorry about your breakup. That's terrible because being in the public, I am sure, I, I had seen videos of you and dancing with your ex and whatnot. It's got to be tough, obviously. As you sip the kombucha, you're like, mm, yeah being in the limelight because you know people obviously want to know your business and that's going to be tough i appreciate the empathy number one um and no need to say you're sorry i mean it, it's been we broke up a while ago okay so this okay. isn't anything new Got you it. know what i mean like we're talking you know it's you're cool yeah you, you know <laughs> i wouldn't say it's that you know, actually, I would. Perhaps because I am so cool with it, it becomes a reoccurring topic. Like, you know, it's been eight, nine, ten months now, and mm -hmm. everyone's like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. Now, perhaps it's because of what I do for a living, or maybe it's because people are assuming I really want to be in a relationship right now, and I obviously have some options. Um, if, if that was something that was driving me, I'm just mm -hmm. not in that place right now. Okay. Um, yeah. I feel like there's something positive in every breakup, right? So when you say, I'm sorry, people have told me that they ended relationships and I say, congratulations. Ah, okay. And, that, and, that, that and, and see, you know, there was, I gave someone some free love advice yesterday. He was going through a difficult breakup mm -hmm. and he was waiting for her to come back to him. And she, she was the one saying, it's not you, it's me, it's not you. It's me, and he was feeling like she had a lot of work to do on herself, okay. right? And that she would be coming back. But after speaking to me, he realized, I'm too good to sit around and wait for her to get her crap together mm. and keep making all these excuses for not treating me well. 
Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm sitting here waiting for her to come back talking to my boy saying, when you think it's going to be a month, two months, three months after talking to me, he's like, wait a minute, I'm too good for this. I'm going to focus on my personal growth. That's what I told him mentally, physically, and spiritually. I'm like, you ready to get back in shape? You ready to get back out there? Stop pining for her. Mm. Great advice. I get it. He probably so, thanked you after and going, oh my gosh, thank you for opening my eyes. So, That's you know, there's a lot of greatness in my breakup with Kavika. You know, I had love for him. We're still very cordial towards one another. I've checked in with him, his family. Mm -hmm. um, he is very supportive of me. We are unique in that we want each other to be healthy and happy. And if that means not being together, we both support that because that's the goal that we want for each other. And, you know, I, I want to focus in on my career theatrically, my unscripted career, my production, mm -hmm. you know, it's necessary that I be here in LA. It's necessary that um, I be bigger. It's necessary. And that, that doesn't say anything negative about him. No. It's just we're not compatible. Right. I love, I love, see, what I love about you, Candice, is that you speak your mind. You're always so, so honest and true to what you believe. You've even spoken up about mental health and, you know, your struggles with depression or anxiety. And I think that somebody looking at you would say, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. She has it all. But people don't know what people are struggling with inside. And so for someone like you to come out and talk about it, I think is just frankly incredible. So what has the response been? And when did you first realize that that is something that you were struggling with? Um, you know, first of all, I want to say thank you for acknowledging that because the whole purpose of me sharing was to inspire anyone going through a very difficult time, getting to that point, even approaching that brink to know, hey, there's someone else out there who got close and didn't do it. Mine was at 17. Okay. by the way. Okay. <laughs> so it, it was quite some time ago, but I still felt the need to share that. You know, I had a lot of difficulties. My biological father died when I was 11. And, you know, there, there were a lot of things happening around me at the time that led to um, a high level of anxiety and depression. Okay. And um, it was a very difficult experience. I created Love by Candace essentially, um, to be my happy and healthiest self. And the whole, I'm the guinea pig, the whole philosophy, right? Focusing and nurturing on the mental, physical, and spiritual is how I've been able to stay healthy and happy since then. Okay. And, and so, it, you know, it's like over the years, I've slowly shared more and more, like as far as my eating tips, my workout, um, my podcast, Love by Candace on iTunes. It's really meant to be listened to over and over because it's a lot of information condensed. Yeah. Um, you know, how to be positive, you know, how to be attractive. There's advice for singles and how to communicate in relationships. It's all about your mental and your spiritual. Um, and they're all tied in. And so when I'm nurturing all three, I never have an issue. And I want to encourage anyone having difficulties, whether they're 17, 37, 47, 77, doesn't matter the age, to seek therapy. You know, I've done that. Yes. And, and I don't think people should feel ashamed to do it. Oh, gosh, absolutely not. I, we, I think we've all had therapy. I, I know I have, too. I, I never think that should be something that somebody should be ashamed of. I mean, that is something that you should see as, as uh, you're lucky to have that. Because some people don't have the opportunity to speak to somebody and to get, you know, to get better. I agree. And there's just a lot of value in having a neutral party mm -hmm. that yeah. is not going to, you know, jump off the phone and run and tell your business. Right, right. To, to auntie or uncle, <laughs> yes. right? Yes. Um, and to the be able to just... Yeah, and then to be able to just sit down and, and say, okay, think of the reaction most people have when you share something that you're going through that's difficult, right? Now, in your life, when you think about your wife, when you think right. about your friends, your family, think about something really difficult you're going through right now, and we're all going through a lot, right? With work, mm -hmm. finances, and everything. They immediately are going to do what? 
they're immediately going to try to give you advice. Want to fix it, right? Mm -hmm. Want to know, did you do this? Did you do that? Well, why don't you do that? Da -da 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 right? Mm -hmm. So how therapeutic is that for you? Are you receiving just a listening ear and some empathy just on how this feels right now? We don't necessarily want to have a fix it conversation every single time we sit down and talk about something that we're going through. And that's why therapy can be so great for some people who have very full lives that want to just share. And they, maybe they don't want their husband or their wife to cut them off and fix it. Maybe they just want to share. They want that, they want that ear to listen. That's A so neutral, yeah. unbiased yeah. ear. Yeah. That's not going to go run and tell your business. Exactly. And, you know, talking about love by canvas, can canvas, love by Candace, you have a really strong following. I mean, they really watch you and listen to you. And we had some people commenting when I posted that you were going to be on this show saying, you know, we love that you spread so much love and your advice really means a lot to us. So I think that hearing that must make you feel so good. I mean, what a way to start the week, right? Knowing that you have people out there who watch you and follow you, who just adore you. I think that is, I think that just must feel so good. You know what? It's bittersweet because I'm like, man, I can't take these long breaks anymore. They might miss me. <laughs> yeah. Like now I'm like, okay, let me be back on here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. Because I, I appreciate the love so much. And I, I feel like for me, um, it really means a lot because I'm not that consistent poster with a schedule and that's just. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, sometimes you're going to get a comedy video. Sometimes I'm on there dancing. Sometimes I'm cooking. Sometimes it's spiritual. Sometimes. Whatever you feel. Yeah. But it, you know what? It's just whatever you're doing, just you do you, right? I love that. I love that. Yeah. And, um, and it really is about you. It's, it really is about the love by Candace family, you know? Um, Everything I do, believe it or not, even when I'm dancing sexy, like, I, there's some people that get a lot of joy. Yeah, I'll, I'll just say, you're killing it. When you, when you do those dances, I, whether you're married, whether you're single, no one can deny that you are killing it. Should we do a dance? Oh, well, we will. I, I definitely want to dance. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll dance. Trust me. But okay. Once I start dancing, I just can't rein it back in. So let, wait. I, okay. I got, let's, so, I got yeah, no, of... I, I love you. I love, yeah. you know what I mean? Because right now it's hard, right? It's not like I have a, you know, I have some current projects, The Wrong Missy's up on Netflix. Well, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about The Wrong Missy. In fact, I just saw it last night and I had no idea that you were going to kick off the film. I don't want to give it away, but you look beautiful. And I was, I was laughing because I'm not going to give it away because there's something about your character, but that you're married to Ramon Reigns. Uh, rain, right? Rains or rain? Rains. I thought it was Roman. Did you? How did you say it? Oh, you know what? I said, I, I, oh, is it Roman? I said Roman. Right. Roman. I, I think that's just the sexy, like, romance novel version. It's I, cool. I don't, we got to, I got to get him on the show to talk about it. But you guys were the best couple. But that scene with David Spade and, oh my God, Lauren Lapkus, she is Love so her. Were you there? So you were in Hawaii filming that just recently, but were you there the whole time or did you just do your part and then leave? I, well, I was living there at the time. Okay. So yeah. when I filmed that and same time next Christmas, I happened to be living there, which was really cool. Yeah. Oh, and working God. with uh, Lauren, I mean, such a great improv actress, love her on Crashing. And <laughs> David Spade, you know, I mean, he cracks me up if he just stares at me. Right. For like two seconds. <laughs> Yes, he is just so, was Adam Sandler on set? I know he. No, I didn't know. No. I never saw him on set. I didn't see him at the rap party either. His so. wife though, his wife's in it. His wife, Jackie. I think Jackie, it's Jackie Sandler. I want to say she's one yeah. of the, the show. I, what, I don't think she was in my scene. Okay, no, she was, no, your scene, well, your scene was special and I can't, again, I just want to, I want to talk about it, but I'm not sure if everyone's seen it yet, but it's on Netflix and you guys. It's on it. Netflix. It's a funny comedy. Um. The big dog, WWE is in it. He's amazing. <laughs> he is um, so He's tall. Oh, my gosh. I didn't realize. I mean, I know David Spade's not very tall, but, I mean, Roman is super tall. He's, he's scary. But you guys you guys really were funny. Oh, I love I loved that scene with you, two of you. It was so good. So, um, okay. So, I know dancing is huge for you. So, 
you find it therapeutic. We all find it enjoyable, right? I mean, you're dancing. You could be dancing in the car. You're dancing in the kitchen. I mean, you've got, you've got, she's, got, she's like rolling it, rolling it. Wait, let's see. Um, okay. No, I'm listening. I, okay. I can multitask. Multitask. Well, let's see. I just, I'm trying to think of a, a song that gets you going. Okay, here we go. Sean Paul, can you hear it? Here we go. Give us some of the Candace moves. I can barely hear it. No straight or here. There you go. Okay, so those DMs are gonna be sliding right in, Candace. Yes. I think we wait, let me back this up. I gotta I gotta dance a little bit with you. I will get back to this after. Here we go. I'm just making up a song in my Wait, how cool is this on a Monday? Dancing with Candace Smith. Here we go. Yes. What's one of your signature? Oh, that's your signature move? What's your signature move? There it is. <laughs> oh my god, I could do this all day long. Here we go. Hey, 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 oh god. Wait, okay. you're married. Wonder well, no, I can still dance. Hey, I can still dance. I can't show them. <laughs> my wife likes to dance. She's cool. I don't think I want to dance anymore. I'll just, we'll just watch you. She's killing it. All right. Okay, we're back. We're back. Okay, we're back. Wait, so that was so much fun. Thank you. That was fun. <laughs> I hope everybody there watched. Wait, what are some of the comments here? Oh, heart um, emojis. We got some dancing emojis. People love you. Wait, so let's talk about what's coming up for you. You have so much, so much always in the pipe. What's going up? What's coming up for you? Oh, my goodness. You know, well, with the pandemic, everything was paused. Um, yeah. I'm still, you know, exploring my theatrical career. So, <laughs> you know, I'm here in LA full time doing the acting thing. Mm -hmm. uh, same time next Christmas, shot in Hawaii, ABC friendly film, um, family friendly film, which I love, which is completely the opposite of My Father Died, the action flick that I did that is super gritty. Mm -hmm. it's, nice kind of it's nice to have a balance. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that in my career, I can be that girl next door, like, you know, but I can also be that badass. So, <laughs> oh, wait, let's look at my movie poster. Let's see it. Let's see it. For my film. I love that way. I kind of see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that, yeah, that is badass. Right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it feels really good to be able to do all of that. And I'm just waiting for everything to pick back up. Okay. And then um, with uh, reality, I, I was in the midst of developing my own show, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, as a love expert. Things are paused right now, but development has gone really, really well. And the Love by Candace family yes. has sent me so many suggestions on what they would love to see on my show, what they would uh -huh. love to see from me, et cetera. So we're kind of leaning towards a hybrid show where you get a look behind the scenes, like my life. Um, I love that. I, hey, that would be entertaining. That would be entertaining. You know, you just bring so much happiness to people. I mean, I feel, I feel so energized just talking to you. And it's, you know, I can see how your followers gravitate towards you in that way too that means a lot that really means a lot and um i'm i'm excited you know i love reality okay. um you know i did survivor uh, i got voted off really quick <laughs> I, wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't great with the social game yeah. um but you know i've appeared on ease platinum life i've I mean, I, you know, I've worked behind the camera and front of the camera. I love reality. Um, you know, I'm excited to have my own show where I'm doing the matchmaking thing, but you also get a glimpse of who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, my cooking, my dancing, my, my love life. Yeah. You know, dating, the, the heartbreak, all of that, I feel like does two things. And, and that's always my goal is to enlighten you know, inspire, educate, and to freaking entertain. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see people laugh. I love comedy. 
And, um, you know, I used to do stand up. I'm going to start back doing stand up. That'll be great. <laughs> yeah, that'll be so much fun. Should I let you know about my first open mic? What was that? Should I let you know about my first open mic? Oh, I hope so. I want to be there. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm serious. You have to let me know. Wait, somebody said you are a very good person. Of course, we know that. I have to ask you, you know, to bring it back to what's happening right now, obviously COVID-19, but what about, you know, the, the Black Lives Matter movement and people out there, you know, uh, protesting, you know, defund the police and whatnot. How do you think our society in general is doing with this topic? Great question. And I actually had um, a pretty intense conversation with a close friend of mine okay. about this topic um, mm -hmm. on the 4th of July, because um, ultimately, you know, for an issue that has been so ingrained in, in our society, in our country for so, so long, for an issue like that to become a priority right now in this current moment, mm -hmm. when we've seen it come up, disappear, be raised, forgotten about, mm -hmm. come up, disappear. But yet we continue to have issues that result in the loss of life that is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. So, you know, before you even discuss it, that's factual. Right. What I just stated is factual. It's true, yes. So, so what, what happens with an issue, just like in a relationship, when it comes up, then it's ignored. When it comes up, when it's ignored, the impact of it, you lose it, right? You start to become numb to it. Here they go again. Right. Bringing right. up the trash again mm -hmm. and again mm -hmm. and again. So you're numb and you're not really receiving and then taking action. Right. And unfortunately, I feel like in our country and in certain markets, cities, counties, this has been prevalent. And unfortunately, some have been numb to the issue. Now, how do you unnumb? Mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. well obviously that is the the mind mindset of the protesters we're unnumbing you waking people up wake up mm -hmm. that numb ear because you heard about this five years ago you heard about this 10 years ago we don't care that your ear is numb you need to unnumb it wake up and listen with some empathy and also let's all take some action Yes. Now, yeah. do I wish that could happen without any businesses, especially small businesses suffering, without there being more division among race? I mean, if you follow me, you also know how important diversity is to me and that I embrace absolutely everyone. Like, if you look at my last comedic video, it's like, you I'm know, with my boy in North America. You're you very know, I don't care. Yeah, you're very inclusive. Very inclusive. It doesn't matter. Trump supporter, white, black your, you know, socioeconomic class. I believe in sharing love with everyone. And no matter where I'm at, I'm sharing love with you. Mm -hmm. And I'm receiving it back, you know? And so being inclusive like that, um, do I want there to be more division? Do I want people making snap judgments about someone else based on the way they're dressed? Oh, this guy has on a ponytail and a Confederate flag. Uh, baseball cap. He's going to be super rude to me. No, he just gave me a smile and said I could get in front of him in line. Okay, that's a healing interaction. And I'm going to say thank you and have a beautiful day. And you know what? Let's have some small talk. Okay, now if we're all doing that, What what's the ripple effect in our community and in our country? Yes, there are issues that need to be addressed, but what if we can all relate to one another and understand and work on those issues together? So I, don't, I hope I addressed your, your question. I mean, I do think that there's other ways to unnumb. And I, I pride myself on my personal interactions all day. That is a goal of mine. Yes. To create more unity and also to educate and it's to so inspire. Fun. Yeah, and I think inspiring and, and talking about it is the first step. Some people don't want to talk about it. You have to talk about it. And you, you know, I'm probably you've been in the entertainment industry. I'm wondering when was the first time you thought that you maybe um, were on the receiving end of like racism? I'm sure it happened to you in the business.
Um, I would say subtly it would be with my hair. Okay. You know, especially early on in the industry, you know, I'm growing my hair out naturally right now. You can see the waves and the yes. kinks and the curls. Yes. Um, back in the day, I would um, get harmful perms and straighten it to mm -hmm. make it easier for the hair people on different shoots. I'm not going to name any names or what productions I was on, but um, being in those scenarios at the time, I never really took race into consideration. It was more about, okay, I'm giving this person a hard time with my thick hair that I was born with. And now I'm feeling some guilt. So I'm going to start doing things to my hair that are long-term um, harmful in order, you know, to make things go smoothly. And because you don't know how to, you know, necessarily do natural hair, I don't want to get you in trouble. Got it. So you're so, thinking of somebody else, but in reality, it was affecting you. Gosh. Well, in reality, in a situation like that, there should be communication both ways, yeah. right? Yes. Like, you know, like you also have to feel like um, the lines of communication are open, right? So mm -hmm. it would have been great if the, if the hair person just simply said, you know what? I don't have a lot of experience with your texture of hair because let's be honest, there's no such thing as white hair, black hair. There's different textures. So you see white people with curly hair, with thicker hair than black people. It's like, people gotta stop saying black hair, white hair. Like we all have different textures. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. Some yeah. of my color can have straight, of course. Teeny, you know what I mean? And so if a hair person just simply said, hey, I don't have experience with your texture. Now, do you have any suggestions? on how you want to wear your hair, do's and don'ts. Is there anybody that you think I should consult with that's been doing your hair, right? Now imagine if, yeah. right, imagine if that was the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I can say, you know what? I've been going to this girl, she does this, she'll press, she, she'll flat iron in if I want to do a weave straight. Um, there's really cute braid styles. Are you open to that? You know, I have an easy braider that I can do it at home before I come into work in the morning. Like, let's communicate and let's create like some dope styles together instead of making somebody feel bad. And it happens on set, you know, unfortunately, with a lot of people with thick or just textures of hair that most people don't interact with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, so, so it's all about being open and honest about it. It's about the communication. See, if people would actually speak up and say that, then maybe those kind of dialogues will be prevented. You know, the, the awkward, things that are taken not so well. So I think yeah, that's important. Yeah, besides that, I mean, you know, I've been really fortunate with a lot of the sets that I've worked on, you know, mm -hmm. like people have been so understanding. It's been a collaborative effort, you know, where they're like, okay, girl, like what wigs do you have? Do you want to do braids? Like, mm -hmm. what do you want to do? Like, even on same time next Christmas, you know, I got back from Mexico, um, with my ex and I had these really cute braids and they're like, mm, we don't want that. And I'm like, cool, what do you want? You know, and they're like, we, we want your hair and you know, we're thinking longer, can you do a partial weave? I'm like, yeah, they're like, cool, can you go tonight? I'm like, sure, right? And so again, just communication, respect and, and, and that's it. Um, so. That's cool, we, I'm glad. I'm glad that that experience was good for you on set. Uh, that is that is awesome. And so, I mean, I honestly could talk to you all day long. I mean, honestly, I mean, you're so much fun. I'm serious, Candace. You're so much fun. And I think people watching are probably feeling the same way. And I don't want to ignore everybody. Somebody said here, unity. I like that word. They like the word unity. And somebody said they agree with you. People need to be more open minded. Um, somebody said they are from Greece. They are watching from Greece. Isn't that incredible? I want to go. I know. I, I have, I have, yeah, keep yeah. going. You want to go, exactly. Well, this no, is No, I don't want to go. I want to yeah. hear. Where else? What else do we have? Oh, where else are people, you mean? Yeah. Uh, um, 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 somebody says, oh, they like your dancing. OK, I'm not surprised. Yeah, that's good. Uh, you're a very good person. You know, just people are giving you a lot of love and a lot of hearts, which is always good. I know you love the hearts. Can so, I say something? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I, this is what I love about IG Live, Candice. You can say anything you want. I just want to say I love you. You know, I haven't been doing interviews. And I'll be honest, um, I've had a lot of requests. 
And, um, you know, I'm actually a little bit of an introvert. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I love sharing and I love being yeah. here with you. Um, but I, I want to thank you so much for staying on top of me and making <laughs> this happen because you just reminded me of how important it is for me to share. And that's how I show my appreciation for my family and for you. So this was very inspiring for me um, as far as what I want to share and sharing on a more consistent basis right now. Well, awesome. Well, I appreciate that. And I'm so glad we connected. And interesting enough, IG Live gives us an hour time limit. Can you believe we've been talking for an hour? It's going to shut us down in a few minutes, in a few seconds, actually. Can you save this? I, I will. Oh, yeah, I will save it and I will send it to you. But again, everybody, watch The Wrong Missy on Netflix. Candace is right at the beginning. I'm not going to give it away. But, well, IG Live is going to cut us off, Candace. But thank you again for taking the time. You look fantastic. You are fantastic. Inside, outside, everything. So thank you again. Yes, here we go. Here we go. Dance us right out of this uh, IG Live. Yeah, yeah. All right, Candace. You can go. I'll see you. Keep going. All right. I'll see you later, okay? We'll talk soon. Okay. Bye. Oh, my gosh, you guys. A little of everything there. So much fun. Well, thank you, as always, for joining me. I'm Marco Gonzalez, and I'll see you next time right here on the couch. Take care. Sure. <laughs>